Before we get to that, I just wanted to follow up on uh, some of our events. We had a really, really cool conference last Friday on getting started in video. And this is part of an ongoing conference series on interactive multimedia, how newspapers are getting into video and audio uh, more on their websites and across social media. So check it out. We've got the full replay and we're publishing it on our site. It's, it's actually published today. It's live now and we're going to send it out in tomorrow's newsletter. So you can check that out. And uh, if you go to that page and scroll down just a little bit, you've got the embedded YouTube video here. And so it's about an hour long conference. And we talked with Mark Healy of The Wave and uh, Kristen Weaver from Wilson County News. Uh, Mark's doing a weekly video, uh, kind of like our office hours. He does it every Friday. They call it Rockaway Fridays with The Wave. And he sits down in front of a camera just like this and reads off stories from the paper. And uh, we are actually working with Mark and helping him produce that now. So this is an area that we're getting into. It's still kind of a, an evolving program. You know, I don't know exactly where it's going to go, but the vision I see for it is that we could use GoToWebinar, this technology that we have uh, that's really great for screen sharing and, and webcasting, but it's also great for real-time feedback. So my vision for this is that newspapers could one day use GoToWebinar or some similar uh, you know, program. It could be Zoom webinar, but it really needs to be a webinar tool that allows them, and, and then they can invite their subscribers to the live conference, okay? And then, so it's kind of like a premium experience. Only the paying subscribers can come to the live filming of uh, their weekly updates or their office hours, whatever they want to call it. And that's exactly what we do at our hometown. This is only open to customers, uh, whereas our other virtual conferences are public. But then the video is put out on YouTube and we you know, broadcast this widely. So there's, there's no need in, in my view to restrict access to a video that's already been filmed. You know, that, that should just be put out there and spread as, as far and wide as possible across social media and on your website. But to have only subscribers come to the live filming, I think really gives them, it's, it's a huge value to the, them as a subscriber because now they can talk directly to the editor. Or in this case, you, know, you can talk right to the CEO and, and our customer support team, and we're here to answer questions the same thing I, I'm, I'm trying to get going with the wave so that they can have their, you know, hundreds of subscribers. I think they've almost got a thousand subscribers on their website. They can open this up to them and then, uh, you know, only they would be allowed to join and ask questions in real time. So that's just kind of a work in progress. And we're, we're open to working with other papers on producing these weekly uh, video casts. So definitely contact me, uh, contact us at Ops if you're interested in that. And then we also talked to Kristen Weaver, who's doing a really cool program with Facebook Live in combination with her audio articles on the website. She's actually monetizing this. So she's got uh, a sponsor that shows up on the Facebook Live feed and also is the uh, sponsor on audio articles. So they have the audio ads spot. And um, she told us she's charging $100 a week for that. So that's just like a, a nice baseline price point. I think you could charge more than that because it's a unique sponsorship and it's totally innovative, unlike anything that they can get, you know, online or in print. You know, there's, there's no equivalent for this in terms of getting uh, exposure for their business. Uh, they can't just go to Facebook and pay 100 bucks a week and, and have this kind of... Um, you know, a personalized sponsorship position. So um, really, really creative, these two publishers. They're doing uh, really exciting things with video and it's a constantly evolving thing. So it was a great conference. We had a lot of feedback from the, the listeners and the attendees, a lot of questions there. So check it out. Uh, the, the whole video is on our website. Okay. Now I want to just give you a quick preview for uh, an upcoming virtual conference. So what we're going to actually do with this, we're going to try something new. We're going to try to 
clip this portion of office hours and create an advertisement that's going to go on Facebook and uh, across all social media. So I'm going to just kind of start over here and um, you're going to see me kind of change my tone here for a second. But uh, again, we're just we're experimenting with creating high yield video with these office hours. So th this is going to turn into not just a video for our customers to watch as a, a tutorial when we talk about the newsletter, but it's also going to be an advertisement for one of our events. OK, so let me just think about exactly how I want to start this. OK, <laughs> I think I got it. And I have a little bit of a script. Oh, no, I didn't actually put a script together. So um, I just need to pull up the description on this screen. OK. Hey, everyone, this is Matt Larson from Our Hometown. And today I've got a really exciting announcement for you in Two weeks, we're going to be having a virtual conference on getting started with audio podcasts. This is going to take place on Thursday, October 29th at 2 p.m. Eastern. And we're really excited about this. We're going to have a very special guest with us, Tom Lapis, the publisher of the Henrico Citizen. He has been really leading the industry in developing new podcasts. He's launched three different podcasts over the course of this year. And his most uh, frequently updated podcast is the Henrico News Minute. He does that every day, actually, every weekday, so five days a week. And it's a, just a quick audio update from the paper. So we're going to talk about his process for that in uh, great detail, how he got started in producing that podcast, what is his process for doing it. But we're also going to talk about some other automated ways that you can get into the audio space, okay? Because audio podcasts are clearly becoming a very popular way for you to connect with your audience in the digital arena, okay? So as a newspaper, this is a great way to reinforce your brand and expand beyond the print and even just having text on your website to expand into the audio space because a lot of people, frankly, just prefer to consume news via audio. And we have the tools to do that, to create the audio material in a completely automated way. Okay, and that's through audio articles. So let me just actually pull this up. If you Google our hometown, whoops, audio articles, our hometown audio articles, that's the first spot there. Okay, and what this feature does is it automatically transcribes your audio or, sorry, what this feature does is it automatically transcribes your text articles on the website into mini podcasts. And so this is a way for you to create audio material in a completely automated way. You don't need to sit there and read the article on your website and record it. Uh, it, it, it happens with the push of a button. And so the idea here is that you can get into audio in a very simple way just by turning on the audio articles feature. So you can just contact us at Ops if you want to do that. But what we're going to be talking about in this conference is this idea of taking audio articles, individual stories, and stringing them together into a single audio file or an audio edition, as I like to call it. So, and then, then you've got a true podcast, okay? Then you can upload that to the podcast platforms and a listener can go in there and listen to your entire paper in one episode of your podcast. So these are two different approaches that we're gonna be discussing at the virtual conference. We're really excited about it because, you know, Tom's method I think has a lot of benefits. It's more personalized. He can do, you know, a lot more with it. It's, it's a lot more flexible because he's creating it manually, but then our approach might be you know, a better option for other papers that just don't have the time or just don't feel like you know, they, they really wanna put in the effort to creating the podcast manually. This is a way to do it automatically using audio articles. And so if you go to ourhometown.com slash virtual conferences, we've got the registration info here. Uh, this is constantly being updated. We're doing virtual conferences pretty much through the rest of the year. They, they get interrupted by holidays a little bit here and there, but through the rest of the year, we're doing them uh, roughly every two to three weeks, and we're going to continue that into the new year. But um, just as a quick 
overview just so I, I make sure that I didn't miss anything. Uh, I just want to review this uh, description here. So whether you're launching a podcast ge geared towards a specific topic or purpose, or you're hosting a more generalized radio style roundup of the latest headlines from your newspaper, a podcast can be an effective marketing tool. It leads to additional revenue streams. Tom has advertising on his podcast and we can also, as we mentioned earlier with uh, Kristen's program, you can insert a uh, sponsorship into the audio ad position at the beginning of an audio article. Um, but this conference is just going to be about getting off the ground and getting into the audio space is the bottom line, uh, no matter how you want to go about it. And so we're going to be looking at these two different approaches. Again, that's Tom from the Henrico Citizen. Check out his website, HenricoCitizen.com. Uh, he's doing a lot of really creative things. He's online only uh, since the pandemic. So, and he's really embracing that opportunity to, to be a digital only newspaper. Okay, so again, this is gonna be on October 29th at 2 p.m. Eastern. You can register at ourhometown.com slash virtual dash conferences. We hope to see you all there. Okay, we'll cut it there for the promotion. Okay, and uh, so that's it for events. Uh, one other thing before we get into the main topic today, I want to just go over, uh, this is from the, the newsletter last week. We put this uh, blog post together. It's actually kind of a sudden thing that Facebook and Instagram announced, but we very quickly found a solution. What they're doing at Facebook is actually, here, I'll just look at some of the text here. It's an important update. So this applies if you are embedding Facebook or Instagram posts on your website. Okay, it's just individual posts. If you take a, a Facebook post, grab the embed code and put it on an article on your website, that this will apply to you. Now, I don't think a lot of publishers actually do this. I think most publishers have a feed from Facebook or Instagram on their site, but this actually won't affect the feeds as far as we know. You know, it, it, that could change with time. <laughs> like Facebook can make these unilateral changes and we do have to, you know, just play catch up as they do them. But as far as we know, that's it's not going to impact those folks. And I know a lot of publishers have those feeds. So uh, you shouldn't have to do this for that. But if you are taking individual posts and putting them on articles, this will affect you. So I just wanna read from this just so that I, I get all the important details in here. So Facebook and Instagram are making changes to the way that content from those social networks is embedded into WordPress pages, posts, and articles. This actually isn't just applying to WordPress. There's a lot of CMSs like Drupal that this will impact as well. But, uh, you know, we're concerned because we're on uh, WordPress across the board. Now, begin beginning on, uh, I think that's Friday or is it, uh, that's Saturday, uh, October uh, 24th. You're going to need to do a couple things to continue embedding your posts on Facebook. First, you'll have to register a Facebook app in order to continue embedding Facebook and Instagram content directly onto your posts and articles. Um, this is because the social media giants are replacing their ex existing O embed functionality. That's just the name of it. You don't need to worry about it. It's called O embed. They're creating new API endpoints that require an application ID and access code in order to display the content being requested. Okay, so this, this is happening on your website when you put that embed code on there. Every time that page is loaded, it's going to Facebook and requesting you know, send us the information that should be in this, you know, embedded code. So there's constant communication between your website and Facebook, and that is going to break down if you don't make these uh, updates. So uh, just to read on a little bit more, you've probably noticed that when you paste a URL to Facebook or Instagram, to a Facebook or Instagram post, into your article editor, WordPress will automatically take the URL and convert it to a format that displays the actual post content rather than just a URL. So you've got the picture in there, you've got some, you know, if there was a, a comment, um, you know, put on, on the original post, 
that's going to all get pulled in. So that's what I was talking about earlier, the communication. That's all happening through O embed. But this will no longer work on the 24th, so uh, we need to make these new endpoints available to what's called O embed plus. And so just come to our website. I'm not going to get into the details, but there's just a couple steps. You've got to register a Facebook app. We, we outline this step by step. Enable the O embed on your app. Um, enter additional app details, switch app to live mode, and then send us your app ID and secret. So that those are just the steps. You're just going to have to do them once, and then you'll be able to continue posting Instagram and Facebook posts on the website. Okay? But there's there's just a lot of um, you know technical details here, so I would just go to the blog posts and read through this uh, for more info. Okay.